So now we have our data in GeoGebra. Uh, it's all in the spreadsheet here, and you can do all sorts of spreadsheet things on this, but you can also use GeoGebra's data analysis tools. When you are in the spreadsheet, you get a new menu appearing at the top, uh, one of which has some analysis tools. I'm going to click on this little arrow. You can see there's lots of options in here, but for the moment, I want to show you how to do a one variable analysis. I'm just analyzing the variable for rainfall in Allerton Bywater. If you click on this, it uh, starts to think up. Oh, this is the data. Let's just check with you what you want. Notice that it's called it column A. Uh, it's noticed that the first entry in column A has got text. It's put it in quotes. And actually, I'd, I'd rather call this Allerton Bywater rather than column A. Luckily, Jojibra is clever enough to recognize that might be what you want. If you click on the little settings thing here, you can see that there is an option to use the header i.e. the first thing in the in the column as a title. If I click that, it is now called this data set Allerton by water instead of just having the first entry as that. That's great, uh, simple, but great. If I then click analyze, it analyzes it. In this case, that means it's drawn a histogram for me without asking too many questions about exactly what I wanted. It has drawn a relatively sensible histogram. We have a scale which is continuous. We have the data fitted into classes. Um, Excel called these bins, but I think uh, we're more used to the word classes. And actually, I can change the number of classes with this slider here. We're currently on five classes. I can just drag this up and down. And that's pretty useful. You can see with lots of classes, I've got 20 classes now, you get a lot of fine detail. Uh, you lose the sort of sense of smoothness of data. But if you go back to really low numbers of classes, you don't get much more detail. But you see that the data are all packed at one end. So that's an easy way to see how changing the number of classes in histogram changes the shape. Uh, but you can go more advanced, which is often worth doing. So I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. You can make this thing dock in with GeoGebra, but I'm just useful having it as a separate window at the moment. That's the little dock button if you want it. Um, there are some more options in this little arrow. You can make, hide or show these more options. And if you show them, you have some more options. You'll notice that it's drawing classes between 0 and, I don't know, it looks like 21-ish. That's probably the highest bit of data. And it's just fitting that in the moment into six classes or five classes, depending on what I choose. If actually I wanted to tell it how wide the classes are, because at the moment they're just over four wide, and that's a bit awkward, I can tick this box and say set classes manually. And it says, uh, here, where do you want to start and how wide do you want the things? And f I don't know, yeah, five sounds like a good width for a class. If I press return now, you see the graph change. It has now given me class widths of exactly five, no awkward class widths now. Um, and you see the data has gone up, the, the graph has gone up to 25 now. The data probably stopped around here, but it's included that whole class, and there's only a clearly a tiny bit of data in that region. So you could make the width 2 and you'd get a much more fine detail and you can make the width 10 uh, and you get nice widths here, you've gone all the way up to 30 but you've lost a lot of the detail. And you have to experiment to see what's appropriate for your data but at least you now have some flexibility. One other thing to notice though is that the uh, the, the, this scale is doing what it should. The vertical scale is actually doing a count of how much is in each class. Uh, so on a histogram, technically, we want this to be frequency density. It is sometimes useful to have the count. And you can change this, although things get a little bit confusing at this point. It's on count at the moment. There are two other options. They are a little bit complicated. You can go and have a read about what they mean by searching for these terms to do with histograms. But let me show you quickly what it does uh, and look up yourself if you want more detail. If you click on relative, you see the shape doesn't change at all. It's kind of expected. Uh, but the scale has changed, actually, so that the entire area of the histogram now sums to 1. That's called their relative, sometimes relative normalized, uh, confusing vocab in statistics all over the place. And a normalized one is actually uh, definitely using frequency density, but it's scaling frequency density to be out of uh, the number of bits of data we've got. In this case, it was 216. Now, I've said that very quickly. Pause and review it if you want to, but uh, look these up if you care, and otherwise don't worry. But this is the closest thing we've got to frequency density on this. You can't, on this setup, easily make the classes different widths, although there is a way around that, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, there are a few other options, though, to discuss before we leave this particular page. You can show the histogram, or you can hide the histogram, which is unhelpful because it's now vanished, but you can also see the frequency table, and this is where you can actually have a look at the data you've got. So if I make this a bit bigger, you can see a little bit more. I've got the 0 to 5 interval because I've asked it to go in widths of 5, and it's telling me the frequency density in that case there. Um, and if I change it back to count, it will actually tell you the counts. And this, this table of data you could select and copy and paste back into a spreadsheet or a Word document just so you've got the table of data without having to manually compile it. Very useful, and you can turn it off again. You can turn a frequency polygon on and off if you want to. The normal curve is for comparing it to a normal distribution that only works when you have normalized the data. That's a more advanced statistical technique, which I'm not going to go into now. Final thing to mention on this page, which is the sort of uh, data analysis page built into GeoGebra, you can choose other options. I'll talk about these in other videos. Leaving on the histogram for now, you could also grab the 
crucial statistics by clicking on show statistics and there you've got a lot of useful information you've got the number of bits of data you've got the mean of the data you've got the uh, population the standard deviation the sample standard deviation uh, all sorts of other bits of data quartiles minimums medians and maximums so you can get a lot of data analysis out of this uh, and this is this is a uh, also copyable uh, to paste into wherever you like. Finally, if uh, the, the sort of scaling is not right and this picture is not something that you're quite happy with, you can change it on here. You can put a grid on and you change the dimensions. But even more flexibly, you can grab this image and get it into the graphics window for Jojbra where you have more flexibility. And that is done by this button up here. If I hover over it, yeah, it will occasionally pop up and say uh, export to graphics. Well, I click on it and it says copy to graphics view. I could also copy it to a clipboard or I could save it as a picture file. All these things are useful. If I click on copy to graphics view though, what it does is uh, nothing apparently because actually it's hidden behind this window. I can close this window though and lo and behold it is there in GeoGebra and this is just a set of axes I can drag around and I can zoom in and out. It's got a label indicating the current area of the histogram I think. I can just turn that label off if I don't want it. But this is good because I could change the scales. Um, I can zoom in and out with my mouse wheel. I could hold down shift and grab the axes and I can scale one axis at a time. Uh, particularly useful if the scale vertically is not what you want it to be. So this is good. You can zoom in and you could export a picture out of GeoGebra. There's lots of ways to do that. For example, file, export, graphics, view as clipboard or picture. GeoGebra is a very powerful device, and once you've got this graph in the graphics view, you can do all sorts of things. There are some even more powerful things I'll show you in the next video before we leave these histograms, but that's it for now.